All right, welcome back, everybody. In the last video, we covered how to burn your SD card with the latest draws image. And in this video, we'll go over the initial boot up config, how to remote control your Pi via command line and GUI methods, and take a look at some of the apps that are installed. Grab a coffee and stick around. So one of the neat tricks that a Raspberry Pi does is it has a boot partition. That partition's a FAT32 partition, so you can read it on just about all operating systems without any special drivers or anything like that. And on that partition, you can create a file called wpasupplicant.conf. And this file has the information for you to connect to your Wi-Fi network. So you can configure your SD card before you ever even put it into your Raspberry Pi so it automatically joins your Wi-Fi network when it boots. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm running Mac OS, and on Mac OS, when you put in an SD card or a thumb drive, it gets mounted into the volumes folder under the name of the volume. Volumes boot, and I'm going to create this WPA underscore supplicant.com file. And I will put the text of this down in the description below, so don't feel like you have to write any of this stuff down. Control interface equals stir equals slash bar slash run slash WPA underscore supplicant group equals net dev update config equals one country equals US network equals bracket SSID equals Shack. Put in whatever the name of your Wi-Fi network is right here. PSK stands for pre-shared key, so put in your password here. There are ways that you can have this encrypted, but this is you and your Hamshack connecting to your own personal network, so we're not going to go too much over encryption, and that's not allowed in the ham world anyway. Key management equals WPA-PSK. Close brackets. Save this file, eject your card, and stick it in your Pi. And when you turn your Pi on, it will automatically join your network, and then we will uh, figure out a couple of different ways to grab the IP address off of the Pi. Okay, we have the SD card inserted into the Pi. We've got the Pi powered up, and it automatically connected to the Wi-Fi network like we wanted it to. So to get there from the command line, we can simply type ssh pi at draws, which is the default host name of the machine and all the wonderful DNS magic is already set up to broadcast its host name and record it around your network. And it asks for a password. Password is nwcompass, which is in the wiki on the groups.io page. So that was one quick, easy way to get in, but if that doesn't work, you can do some more uh, deductive reasoning with a tool like Nmap. Uh, Nmap is something you can install on uh, Linux-based operating systems. OS X is based on uh, FreeBSD, so Nmap's available for it as well, and there's probably some network scanning tool that you can get for Windows. Um, so do a quick ping scan of my local subnet and give me back the results. And this reports back all the machines on my network and gives host names for what they are. So I've got a Raspberry Pi Zero acting as a security camera on 257. And I've got draws on 261. And nothing else of any real interest. But now I know that the IP address is 261. So I can SSH Pi at 192.168.200.61 and NW compass, and we're in. Lastly, if that doesn't work, you can plug a head in to your machine. Head's kind of a industry in the know lingo jargon kind of thing, and it just basically means keyboard and mouse and monitor. Um, we can see the IP address when we plug that in and log in, and I'll show that a little bit later into the video. So right now we are online, we're connected, we're going to do the 
updates from Northwest Digital Radio and inside of the iHome directory there is a folder called n7nix config and I spelled that wrong n7nix slash config sudo su and run the script called appconfig.sh with a parameter of core and it's going to go out and ask you some questions and download some stuff and make some configurations and then we'll reboot. So just follow along with me here. Enter call sign followed by enter. KM9G is my call sign. And it wants to change the password. So let's change this password to something that I know and you don't. Current host name is Draws. It's telling me to change it, so I will change that to my call sign. It wants me to set the current time zone. And I will pick America from the list. And scroll down until I find something useful. scroll up until I find something useful. The list is not exactly in alphabetical order. Chicago is close enough. Enter the IP address for AX25. I don't care about that just yet. We'll get into that in a later video. So I'll just hit enter for the default value. We'll enter in zero. All right, that config is finished. Let's reboot. All right, back from the reboot after configuration and updates. Let's get back in there and enable VNC so we can have a GUI experience. And we change the host name now. Let's see if that works. So to enable VNC, you use the Raspi config program. You'll probably wind up using this a couple of times over your uh, Raspberry Pi career. Under Raspi config, you go to interfacing options and you pick VNC. Would you like the VNC server to be enabled? Yes. And the VNC server is now enabled and there is no need to reboot when you do that. So let's log out of here and log in over VNC. Okay, we've got VNC enabled and connected, and you can now see the Pixel desktop. So there are many VNC clients available for your desktop or your phone or your Pi. Experiment, find one you like, live with it, love it. After all, that's what this hobby is all about, right? In my case, I've installed real VNC on my MacBook, and here we are. So let's take a step back a minute and examine configuring the network and finding your IP address from the GUI interface. If you've plugged in a keyboard, mouse, and monitor, the machine will automatically log in at boot. Uh, this is something that you can configure, turn on or off. Um, your favorite search engine is your friend here to figure out how you want to turn that on or off. And uh, let's take a look. So up on your menu bar across the top, you can see the Wi-Fi icon right there. Uh, when you're not connected via Wi-Fi, it's kind of this weird looking 
mixer slider thing with some red X's on it and so forth. Uh, click on this, it'll drop down a list. From the list you can find your Wi-Fi network. When you pick it, it'll ask you for the password to your Wi-Fi network and away you go. Um, this icon up here on your taskbar is for terminal and that brings up a terminal window. So we type in IF config, which IF stands for interface. Config obviously means the config and this will show me the interface config. Uh, it returns back with some helpful information about different interfaces on my machine. Let's maximize this real quick. So the first interface it's going to return is ETH0. That's the Raspberry Pi's onboard Ethernet port. If that's how you've connected, you can see the address there. I've not connected that way. That's why you can't see it. LO is the loopback. Uh, that's a wonderful thing about TCP IP is that it's got a loopback interface that you can uh, do all kinds of wonderful tricks with. It's kind of outside the scope of this video, though. And then WLAN0 is the one that we're interested in. This is your wireless network interface. And you can see right here, it says INET and your internet address. Well, your IP address for your local network. In my case, that's 192.168.261. So there we have it. For the most part, if you stay on the same network, you'll have the same IP address. One of the magical things about DHCP is it says, hi, my name is so-and-so. Last time I was on your network, I was 200.61. Can I have that back? And the DHCP server will happily give it back to you if nobody's grabbed it since then. Um, somebody has grabbed it since then. This is how you would go about figuring out what it is now. So we've got that all configured. We've got logged in over SSH. We've got logged in over VNC to see the GUI. And this is pretty much what it would look like if you were connecting via keyboard, mouse, and monitor directly to the machine. So from here, let's take a look at some of the apps that are installed. So right off the bat, you can see a couple of applications right on the desktop. Zaster is one, and YAAC is another. And then you pull down this menu, and there's really not a ham radio app folder here in your menu. Um, different programs put their icons in different locations, so you'll find them all over the place. Uh, but a lot of the times they'll show up under internet and under sound and video. And you can get real fancy and create a ham, men ham radio menu and move the applications over there. Um, but the next time they update, they might not work. So you might have to keep on doing that. So under internet, you can see a couple of the FL series of apps, FL Amp, FL Arc, FL Digi, FL Message, FL Rig, and there's another link for Zaster. And Zaster is an acronym. It stands for X Amateur Station Tracking and Information Reporting. I didn't know that. Uh, under Sound and Video, you'll find JS8 Call, and you will find WSJTX. WSJTX is where you will do all of your uh, Whisper, FT8, and JT65 type communications, along with the other protocols that are in the suite. Um, and that is about it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll explore connecting to the radio and maybe even try and do something radio related like uh, see our GPS data or make an FT8 call. Uh, so thank you very much for sticking around through the end of the video and watching it with me. Check out the video description below for links to products mentioned and used in the video and any special uh, config file, text, or anything like that, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. If you like this video, consider sending a tip through PayPal. Thanks for watching, and 73s!